All right, Jeff Kramer coming at you again with another streamer pattern. This is a, a personal favorite of mine for trout. This is one of the, the few larger streamers that I'll tie for trout and fish uh, in West Virginia quite a bit, sometimes in Ohio. Um, it's a big single hook streamer. This is a size 1-aught uh, Daiichi 2460. Uh, the 2461 is the same hook, just in a black finish, uh, in case you need to know that. Um, this hook is going to be fairly, or this fly is going to be fairly heavily weighted. I like to fish these on a floating line usually because I'm fishing shallower water for trout back home. Um, so this is a medium sized pocket cone that I have powder painted into kind of an olive. It's got a cool little Protec powder paint. It's got an olive with a red flake in it and provides a little bit of weight. And we're also going to add some 0 .030 lead or non lead wire. And I usually add 13 wraps to this. It's just an easy number. I know some people are superstitious with that number. I am not, not scared. Um, it's a good number of wraps to push up under the cone here. And it allows that cone to sit a little bit more flush on the hook. And it gives you just enough lead wraps sticking out the back that you can get your thread started and kind of lock those down. So that's actually how I came to that number of 13 wraps. Trial and error. So make sure those wraps are pushed all the way up under the cone. And I'll usually give four or five wraps of thread over those wraps just to keep them in place. And then we're gonna advance our thread back to right above the barb. There is a nasty barb on this hook, it's not a barbless hook. You can mash that if you wish. Uh, I usually end up doing that. So the Next step is we're going to add a marabou tail, but instead of taking our marabou plume and just pulling it back and tying it in like you would on most buggers, I'm going to tie in two plumes of marabou and wrap them together. And what that's going to do is let this marabou really uh, blend together, so you're going to get kind of a mottled color on this fly. And this is going to be kind of a, this is what they call the fiery brown with an olive mix. So I'm going to go ahead and strip off the lower fibers on that stem of marabou. This is a really good piece of marabou. You want to, for wrapping marabou, you want something with a good defined stem and nice long barb sticking off. This is a really good plume. So we'll tie in our first piece right here. I tie these in by this, the butt of the stem. Some people tie them in by the tip. I always do the butt. And we're going to also do the same with our piece of olive marabou. And I'm going to tie this in parallel with that piece of marabou also by the butt. And I'll usually advance my thread up just a little bit in front of the hook point. Now when I wrap this together, I like to pull these together by the tip and then kind of pull these fibers back down a little bit. You can see that they're going to be wrapping together. And as I wrap them, I'm just going to start wrapping these forward in fairly tight turns. I just like to keep kind of preening the, the fibers back. If they start to get trapped a little bit, you can take a brush and brush those out if you need to. But if you're careful with how you're wrapping these and keep printing the fibers back, they will usually wrap pretty cleanly. And I will wrap almost all the way forward to where my thread is, which is going to be, it's going to look like a fairly full marabou tail, but once you wrap your thread back over that material to bind it back down, it, it collapses it down a little bit. So now that I've got that marabou wrapped forward, I'm going to go ahead and chase my thread up through. And this is just 6 aught uni again. On this fly, I do the same thing as I do on almost all of my deer hair bugs. I'm going to trim the tip out. I will do most of the fly with something like 6 aught uni. Uh, and then once I get to the deer hair portion, I will switch to the gel spun. And this fly is no different. So I'm going to draw those marabou fibers back best I can, kind of try to distribute them around the hook point, around the hook. So you can see how that modeled together with a, a nice blend of brown and olive. Now we're going to wrap back over these to about the barb of the hook. So there is your blended marabou tail. Uh, next, I'm going to add just a little bit of flash. I don't like to add a ton of flash to the tail on this. Usually just two or three strands, and this is uh, holographic flash shibu and copper. I really like copper flash in these flies that have olive and brown blended together. So I'm going to take the full length of the material, 
fold it over the thread, tie that down right here on top, split it apart, and wrap down each side. And then you can, now that's nice and locked in, and now I'm just going to go ahead and trim the excess flash off just about the same length as the tips of the marabou. So you just end up with three, str with three strands of the holographic copper flash abu down each side. The body on this fly is going to be a complex twist uh, made up of one piece of olive schwappen, one piece of fiery brown, and uh, copper UV polar chenille. So we'll prep a schwappen feather. Tie that in, and then we're going to prep our fiery brown. We're tying these swapping and feathers in by the tip. And then we're going to tie in our copper UV polar chenille. So for this fly, you're kind of sticking with that theme almost the whole way through as far as having olive and brown and copper blended together. It makes a really nice uh, sculpin imitation. To advance our thread back up to the lead wraps and we're going to go ahead and make our complex twist by spinning these materials together. These two shopping feathers and our flash. I'm going to make sure you don't trap too much of your marabou tail when you spin these together. Um, I like to just do this with my fingers. I'll just go ahead and wet my fingers and just grab the stems and start twisting these together. And once we start getting a nice spin on this material, I'll take a dubbing brush and just kind of pick these out just a little bit so we're not too bound down. And then even though I've got a rotary vise, I am not a rotary guy, so I like to hand wrap this stuff and I will go in fairly tight wraps up the hook shank. It's kind of working that material back as I wrap so I don't trap too much of it. You want to leave just a little bit of space behind the cone because what we're going to do next is tie in a set of rubber legs and we're also going to have a deer hair collar on this fly. So I like to leave, I like to stop with my complex twist right about where those lead wraps stop behind the, the cone. Get our thread in front of that material and now we're going to go in and just clip out our excess. Go ahead and preen these fibers back just a little bit and wrap down over the top. So you can see we've left ourselves a little bit of a landing pad there for tying in our rubber legs and our deer hair. This is a good opp opportunity if you want to go ahead and take your brush and brush this back a little bit also. So for rubber legs on this fly, I like to have just a little bit of a pop of color. So these are going to be a bright orange and black flake, uh, kind of a barred leg. I'll take three strands and at the full length of the, the strands here, I'm going to cut so that they're equal length so I end up with two with the little tabs of rubber on the end. And we're going to stick the tab end right up into the cone on each side of the fly and tie that down. So you end up with three nice bright rubber legs on each side of this fly. So once those are nice and secure, I will go ahead and give a whip finish and be done with my 6 aught thread and I'm going to be switching back over to the gel spun. And this is like a reddish colored gel spun. Um, I've got several colors of this and I didn't realize when I first started buying GSP that you're never going to see it. So it really doesn't matter if it's red, white, black, chartreuse, whatever colors they make. Um, if you get this collar nice and thick, you're, you, anytime with deer hair, you're never going to see the gel spun. So it doesn't matter what color it is. Okay, so now we're going to add in our collar. And this is going to be olive deer body hair. This is a primo strip. And it's going to take a pretty good sized clump of hair to fill both the top and bottom of this fly to get a nice full collar. And once I get this cut off, I'm going to go ahead and use my comb and comb out as much of the under fur and the short stuff as I can. You can see you get a lot of gunk that comes out of your deer hair. 
And once you get that cleaned up a little bit, you're going to go ahead and throw this in a stacker and get the tips evened up a little bit. So once we've got a, our hair cleaned and stacked, I'm going to rotate this fly over. And your gauge for how long you want the deer hair tips to go into as far as how, how long you want your collar to be is going to be about the point of the hook. So I get this to where I've got about the point of the hook in terms of length. Pinch that hair together. I'm going to give two wraps over it. Start to cinch it down. And then I'm going to hold onto the side here and really cinch down tight on this deer hair. And then we're going to give a couple of chase wraps through this just to help lock it in place. We're going to rotate it over and we're going to repeat the process on the top side of the fly. And once again we are going to measure the length for this to be the same to about the hook point. It can be a little bit harder to see when you've got to work on the top of the hook, but we're pretty close right there to length. Pinch that in place, give two wraps over it, cinch down, and then we're going to really cinch tight on it. If you hold up on the cone as you cinch down, you can really put a lot of tension through the gel spun to get this stuff to, to really flare out for you. Chase your thread in front of the deer hair, and get it right behind the cone, and then you can give a couple of half hitches to help lock your thread in place, and that's usually all you ever need to keep this from coming undone. And once you get that done, you can go ahead and cut off your gel spun and you are ready to trim. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and trim the collar on this now, and we're going to use a double-edged razor blade again. Uh, we're going to eventually follow the contour of the cone to, to kind of shape the head and the collar a little bit, but as for me, I like to take the first cuts and go basically square cut on the top, bottom, and sides just to kind of get a lot of this excess material cut off and get it out of the way. You're going to cut more of it off obviously as you go, but I just like to kind of block cut it right now just to kind of get a lot of that excess crap out of the way. If you push too hard you can cut into your hair tip and kind of destroy your collar so you want to be a little bit careful about how much you push on this. So you can see what we've got right now are still pretty rough and we just kind of got this just kind of all the excess gunk uh, trimmed off of there so now we can be a little bit more precise and see what we're doing and we're going to take our razor blade and we're going to basically just follow the contour of that cone back and help form kind of the bullet uh, head of this fly just rotate the fly as we go The deer body hair can be a little bit more coarse and takes a little bit more razor tension to get it to cut. So you have to be a little careful you don't push too hard and slice back through everything. And this is again, this is a fly that I trim without bending the blade. I keep it straight and just cut flush along the, the cone head. And as you start to get closer, if you turn the fly and kind of point it towards you, you can get a sense for whether you need to take some more off the top, more off the bottom, more off the sides. We're going to take a little more off the top here. Get pretty close there. You can see there we're getting a pretty round shape following the contour of that cone. As usual for me, once I get it back in the vise, I usually see some seeing it at a little bit different angle, and I might see a little bit more hair that I want to trim off. You can spend way too much time trimming these if you want, especially for me. Get kind of picky with them.
and once you get that trimmed about to where you want it, the next step is to go ahead and trim off our excess rubber legs. So I usually let them kind of just hang down. I'll get an, a rough estimate of where I want, to, want them to cut, be cut. I like to have them go about halfway down the length of the tail. So I get kind of an eyeball measurement on that and just cut all six at once so they're pretty symmetric and pretty even. And then our last step is just to glue on some eyes and these are like a four millimeter uh, 3D eye that is sized to fit these medium pocket cones. These are a red colored eye. And I will just usually take a small drop of CA. Get your hair out of there. Small drop of CA in the eye cavity here on each side. And then once you drop the eyeball in and press it a little bit, it'll set in place. And because it's protected on all the edges, uh, these are almost impossible to rip off. But the only time I think you'd ever have a problem is if you start banging this off of rocks. It might work some eyes loose, but I don't have these come out very often at all. So once you get those in place, your fly is essentially done, ready to fish. And this is a complex twist uh, version of a Bow River bugger.